Welcome back you guys. I'm Tassie and this is my Shaman Memoirs channel. I want to start this video off first with a disclaimer. And the reason for my disclaimer is that I'm getting an influx of a lot of messages from people, whether it's through my DMs or even through my email. I do not practice for the general public. So people who have a lot of things that you need help on, I don't have a shrine that's actually up to practice for you guys. And just so you guys also know, there is a proper process on how to ask a shaman for services. And that's why there's the whole shrine thing and why I don't offer services to the general public. In older videos, I actually talk about how to properly ask a shaman for services, etc., and how that all goes down, especially if like sometimes you go to a household and there's more than one shrine. So really that's kind of how it works. So you guys pay your proper homage to the shaman spirit guides who actually help them and assist with everything that they know themselves. They don't know any of it without their guides. All right, and then I also want to add that I recently went shopping. That part is not the amazing part. What happened though was I actually purposely bought something for my spirit guides and they were, we, we kind of like, I okay, we kind of were like disagreeing on what I was getting. <laughs> All right, so I got a notebook for my spirit guides, and I haven't filled it out, obviously, but um, it's going to be meant for, you know, with my shaman channel here, things that I forget because a lot of people write me a bunch of questions that they want me to talk about with my experience with certain things. And then they, we went to the store and there was actually several books to choose from, but I'm pretty sure you guys know this, but I really genuinely like the color dark purple. And so obviously this book is blue, so you can see who won. <laughs> you know, I'm going to the store and they're reminding me like, oh, we have to go get a book for us, blah, blah, blah. So I'm at the store and I'm looking at all the books and I see this purple one. And then I see this blue one here that I have. And I was like, I really like the purple one. And they said no to me. <laughs> they were like, no. And I was like holding the blue one and I was like, like, I don't really want this color. And they're, they're like, no, this is for us. So just so you guys know, especially like shamans, you know, who have like their spirit guides and they know how to communicate with them. Well, there's a lot of times where you may not agree on things, <laughs> but I gave in to them because I knew that if this is something that they're doing. This is something that they would want. So then they got to choose the look, the color and everything. I mean, really the last time I went shopping specifically for my guides was when I was like doing my shrine and everything. That was so long ago. I was such a baby then. <laughs> okay. So on this video, we're going to be talking about people who have seen and watched my videos and then they end up feeling haunted. Whether they start to have nightmares, they start to see things, they start to feel really, really scared. So with that being said, I want you guys to kind of think about my videos that I've done because I feel like I've given you guys all the answers to a lot of your questions. But what's happening is that people are not applying the knowledge I'm giving out to their real lives. They require me to actually say it. So we are going to go into what it all means, why it's happening to some people. And you should already know it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Starting off, you guys know my channel is called Shaman Memoirs which basically mean that they are memories, my real memories. So everything that I tell you guys, unless sometimes I specifically reference, um, some shamans have mentioned this, or I know a shaman who has said this, etc. right? However, the majority of all of the things I've told you guys, all the ghost stories, all of the demons, all of this and that, they are real. Okay, first off, they are real. These are not made up stories and these are my memories, my experience, things that I have gone through. All right, so that's the first part. The next part, manifestation, the power of it all. So manifestation, I've done a video on this as well. And really it's going to be if you have the ability, because some people, their abilities are not 
as strong in manifestation as others, okay? Manifestation means you can manifest magic. You can get it to work based off of what you want. That is you thinking and thinking and thinking about it until it works. Now, the next part, why do you think you easily become haunted? Okay, and you start seeing things. Why would that happen to an individual? <laughs> In layman terms, I'm going to break it down to you guys. <laughs> Basically, people who are affected by my videos, even if I'm talking to another shaman about, yeah, there was this time, especially when I talk about Michael, you know, the demon who was with me for many years of my life. Um, they start to go into physical pain and they start to get scared and they get chills whenever they hear me talk about it. Same thing with on my social media pages, Shaman Memoirs as well. When I take photos, especially of my old house where I met Michael, a lot of people could feel the evil presence there. A lot of people got really scared just looking at the photo. You have to kind of think about it. Why would this happen to you? Why? I mean, just why, okay? It basically means you're somebody who can easily enter the spirit world. You can easily access it. Now, the problem with that, and I've done a video on this as well, um, a lot of people do try to practice, whether it's through meditation, whatever they want, trying to do uh, lucid dreaming. So they purposely practice to try and get into the spirit world. But some people don't really truly know how easy it actually is to get in there, especially if you know how to. But in my video, I talk about you need to protect yourself accordingly. So I don't always recommend for anybody to just go in there unless you know how to protect yourself because it's just like here in the real world. There are bad and crazy things in the spirit world. Probably worse in the spirit world. Now, realizing all of this, you need to, again, be aware when you guys are hearing my stories, my experiences, and suddenly you start to see things, you are pulling it out of the spirit world. You. It ain't me. Hi there next to you, okay? It is you. That also means you probably have an affinity or you could be a shaman because you can easily evoke that. So just having that ability alone, that means you need to be more cautious of the things that you do and the things that you think of as well and say. Now, for me, as you guys know from my videos and my experiences, I've told you guys, since I was a kid, I've had my spirit guides there and they've always told me things. They always taught me things. So I know how to protect myself and I do different things based off of what it is that's happening around me. So typically, a little insight for you guys, whenever shamans go into the spirit world, the first thing that they do is protect themselves. They don't just, oh, you have a demon on you or a demon in your house. Let me go into the spirit world and see what's wrong. And then they go straight to your house. Okay, like that never happens. Okay, <laughs> Shamans, the first thing you do when you start to go into the spirit world immediately is always you call all of your guides and they all come with you. <laughs> There's a reason for it. There's a process for it. And that's to protect the shaman. It is to protect the individual going into the spirit world. Now, you know, I've also mentioned shaman, the term in general, you know, different cultures, they all have different names for it, whether it be witch doctor or a witch in general. There are different terms. However, the same laws exist. You need to protect yourself if you are going into the spirit world. Like, if you forget anything I say, just remember that part. Now, I can't tell you how to protect yourself the way I do because that is magics taught by my spirit guides and I can't teach that to anybody unless they are my student 
or you know yeah they probably wouldn't let me teach anybody else you know so <laughs> that would be the only reason and so I just want to let you guys know though like how can I protect myself then go watch my other video on protection however I will just kind of try and break it down in basic terms and how you interpret it it is entirely going to be up to you so we are going to do an activity today that's right i am going to do an activity so that you get an idea of what i am referring to and then hopefully you can apply it into the real world Ta -da! so <clears throat> i'm i was i'm not drinking today <laughs> I do not drink on nights when I have to go to work the next day. However, I want to show you guys, imagine this glass, okay? I need to ship this and I want to make sure I don't break it. So what do you think this glass represents? And I hope you realize it's you. <laughs> okay. So the first thing, if I'm going to be shipping this across country and I don't want this to break, Possibly, I will use bubble wrap. So, I'm just making sure the other end's closed before I just drop it in. <laughs> you know what? Let's put the stem in first. And then let's kind of push it in and try. All right, it's wrapped. So this alone is probably not enough. So maybe I would use, if I put it into a box, um, maybe I'm going to use some packaged peanuts or I will use wrapping paper or something kind of thick to kind of also absorb any impact around it. Ta -da! My favorite color besides white and black, you guys. This is the purple that I love. And this actually is from Tarte because I buy a lot of makeup. All right, so in he goes. All right, now some people might choose to put this into like a bubble wrap thick kind of envelope, or I'm gonna use a box in my case. And obviously it's not gonna be fully closed, so I'm gonna use tape. All right, it is completely taped up. I'm going to go pick it up and see if it broke. <laughs> Let's open it and see if I broke it. It is whole. I have like 12 others. So even if it broke, it would have been okay. So the whole point of that exercise <laughs> to see if Tassie's going to break her shot glass. It is meant for you to understand how much protection goes into protecting an individual. All right. So imagine the bubble wrap. What did the bubble wrap represent? All right. Now I can't tell you all the inner workings. However, I want you to understand, imagine and manifest, not necessarily bubble wrap. It could be, yeah, it's up to you. Okay. But imagine something wrapping itself around you as a form of protection. And to test it, I want you to think of a rabid dog. Okay. <laughs> Some people might go to the extreme and imagine a demon. Um, <laughs> let's say whatever it was that you're thinking of in your head tries to grab you. All right. Does it go through that? Can it, in your mind, even if you keep manifesting bubble wrap around you, can that demon or that rabid dog just bite you? Can it just grab you through all of that? And if it's not strong enough and it was able to break through, you need to work at it. You have to constantly, and it, I will be honest, um, it does take time and energy and you might get headaches trying to focus all the time, but slight headaches okay like because you're trying to force it all the time around you um through years of practice you won't even have to think about it it's going to be there naturally all of the time all right so thinking about the bubble wrap and how you create something to quickly embody you and that's head to toe everything your fingers even okay so 
why stop at the bubble wrap? Okay, so why would you even allow that demon or that rabid dog to even be able to touch you and reach out and grab you? Okay, so now you need to think about how we use, whether it's going to be packaging peanuts or the wrapping paper that I used. You want to consider now you want another force over whatever you had used originally. And again, it would be like your bubble wrap, right? So you can imagine a poisonous fog. Okay. So the minute any entity is within that poisonous fog, it can't even reach you. So you want to think of something like that and you have to work at making sure is that rabid dog even able to get to you or that demon, whatever it is you're trying to imagine. Now, again, if the poisonous fog that I am referring to, if it's not strong enough, think of something else. What else could be stronger? What else could help protect you? And you want to go with it. Okay. Now, there are times when it that layer actually changes for me, depending on the type of entity I'm facing. Now we get to the box. So the box, in a sense, a lot of you may have heard of it. It is basically your walls, you know, the enclosement that keeps you fully protected. So as much as you can going out into the world or going into the spirit world, okay? The box is what I refer to as my walls. My walls are always up and it's going to sound really stupid, but when you first start out, just keep imagining building walls around you all the time. And this could be you driving in traffic. This could be you walking in the mall. This could be you while you're eating. Just quickly, always do an exercise and remind yourself to put your walls up, just to make sure your walls are up. And for myself, my walls come down the most when I'm drinking um, because then my guides come out more and they are really happy because it's more of a... They, they get to be a little bit naughty. So, you know, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, like a ghost or a demon is going to come by, you know, like, um, I am going to be more prone to talk to it though, or to interact with it in some kind of way. Um, I will say that for myself, my walls, I will purposely raise them when I don't want to see certain things though. If an entity is pretty strong, it will break through and then I can see it. And I'm not going to lie, that actually makes me a little bit more wary because it was that strong that it could break through that wall where I could see it. So those are things that you can continuously practice and try doing. And this is really going to depend on your own ability. All right. Some people can easily do all of that. And it's no problem. Other people, you know, I've known personally, they have to work at it a lot. And in time though, it becomes easier, but there are times where they're not sure it's working. And so, you know, like it's all about, again, manifestation and the power of willing it. Um, some people have different strengths though. Okay. I'm going to be honest about that. Not, this isn't something that one size fits all. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because when I go into the spirit world and I see certain individuals, they will have certain tools with them sometimes. Like some people will carry a sword and I'll mention it to them because they ask, you know, like, oh, what do I look like in the spirit world? And I always tell them that they had this tool with them. And they were like, that's crazy. Because whenever I have dreams of like a ghost or something's chasing them, they have that same tool all the time. And so some people will be stronger with their tool. So, you know, I've been asked lately about one other thing I'll mention, which is kind of weird, but, um, you know, like how people, if for among people, especially, and I've mentioned this before too, Certain forms of protection, they use knives or swords, etc. So you guys can also do the same thing. So you want to get one of those in, in, in there? It's a really good color. What color is it? Is it going to be a white or black? Okay. Um, I want, I want white. Okay. If you're going to do it, do white. All right. And the other thing that I wanted to mention was that I've gotten people asking me questions about 
people selling things on Facebook, like blessed items. So first off, I want to say, you know, because they were wondering, like, is it real? Basically, um, it is possible for people to bless items. Definitely. You know, just like how Hmong people believe in the swords or the knives thing, you know, like, um, I'm kind of biased even when it comes to that because I don't do the whole knife thing the way a lot of Hmong people do. Okay. <laughs> like some people drive in their car where they have it underneath their seats. You know, it's, um, it's a little sword or a little knife, you know, um, some people will sleep with it under their pillow, but for myself, I don't generally believe in that just because I know that it's kind of like, okay, this is again, my opinion and things that I would do. If I was giving somebody a sword or a knife, I would bless it before I did it. The thing is also with the sword or knives and what it represents. Okay. A lot of shamans use it a lot. Even myself, I have one. I actually used to have two, but anyways, you know, we use it as well, but it's because we are wielding it. We are actually killing things with it. So it represents where ghosts are scared when they see it. However, if they keep seeing it and it never moves, you know, like they, it, it, they, they will keep trying. That's the thing. They don't just try once. Oh, they got a knife. I'm never coming back. That's not how it works. Okay. They come back you guys. But if you're not evoking the power that it is capable of, you know, so think of what I just said and how it applies to items being sold on Facebook. <laughs> I am not knocking it entirely, okay? They could possibly do cocoon to the items, you know, to invoke magic, invoke power over it. But would I buy anything like that? Personally, I wouldn't, but then again, I'm a shaman. I mean, any blessing is a good thing. Um, personally, I don't really think people would curse objects, especially if they're selling it. Typically, you know, if they curse something, it's somebody who they could easily hand it to, who they would possibly never suspect. And you may not even notice that you have a cursed item in your household or in your possession of some kind. I mean, if they were smart, that's kind of how they would do it. <laughs> I mean, definitely, you know, like with what I'm telling you guys, now that you know, you know, like why you may be getting haunted, why you might be feeling scared or start seeing things, etc. A lot of it has to do with you, which I'm also going to stress that you want to be careful with you trying to practice protecting yourself because, you know, <clears throat> it strikes me as you're an individual who's not aware fully of what they're doing at times and how easy it is to go into the spirit world. So it makes me a little bit more cautious and wary for you that you may not realize just how easy it is to go into the spirit world. So as you keep practicing, what I fear is if you go into the spirit world while, while you are practicing. So I had another person ask me about the red strings that shamans sometimes hands out um, to haunted individuals. Um, you know, just so you guys know, it doesn't necessarily mean you're haunted. It could just be for a blessing, luck, protection, etc. Okay. I myself have handed them out on many occasions. Now, those items that I handed out when they are the red strings, okay? They are the strings that I take off of my tools that I wear when I go into the spirit world. So my spirit guides have worn it. It has been infused with our protection. So it's not necessarily just, you know, I went to Joanne's fabrics and I got a hundred percent red cotton <laughs> because, um, it's just not necessarily just that. Okay. Now I will say definitely it does work for anybody who gets those kind of strings from a shaman specifically other people who do strings, whether it's fused with white or black, et cetera, colors, it is again, that is similar to like the whole Facebook thing where they are selling blessed items. The same thing can happen if the individual knows how to bless the item, you know, that's going to be tied on the individual. So let's say you went to a shaman, um, they did it to you, you know, like, can you cut it off, etc. We don't 
ever recommend you cutting it off. We want it to fall off naturally. So in time on its own. So I remember I've told you guys this story before when, um, I had somebody who came and I gave them a red string. They wore it for years. And then one day they were taking off a sweater and it slipped off with the cuff of the sweater. And he's just like, no, because it had fallen off now. I mean, his wife came running because she thought like something terrible had happened. And he was like, the string that Tassie gave me it fell off. And then they messaged me quickly because they were like, can we just put it back on? I was like, just let it go, honey. Like, if you really want another one, I'll just get you another one. But you don't really want to cut it off, okay? You want to leave it on for as long as you can. All right, so in my next video, I'm going to talk about smudging, really. Um, I had questions about smudging, if it actually works, etc. So we'll go ahead and talk about that. And before I leave, I just want to quickly let you guys know, because this happened recently, um, you know, like where I had an individual kind of like, we were just talking because there were things going on in their lives and they were just kind of asking me like, um, you know, like when I see ghosts around people or spirits of, of the deceased or any kind of weird entity around them, like, do I tell them, like, what do I do? Like, do I stare at them? Like the entity, not the person. And I told them, that generally I don't, I try to make it a rule when, when it, it only works when I'm not drinking. Okay. When I'm drinking, it goes out the window, but if I'm sober, I genuinely choose not to n tell people that they got something on them only because it makes people uncomfortable. You know, like they, they start to get scared. Um, you know, they may have a different belief where it's not always welcome news or information. And as far as like an entity, like I don't stare at them, you know, like if I look at them really quick and I see them, that's it. I, I don't look at them again. I try not to because the longer I look at them, they become aware I can see them. And when that happens, I'm not happy because they'll come and bug me the rest of the time. <laughs> But, you know, for myself, you know, I will have to end up threatening it to, for it to actually leave me alone. But even then, I get all weird, like, and then the other person's like, why are you weird? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, if you want to know. I remember my sister, I was talking to her one day, and my sister, she has blonde hair. And she was like, we were both sitting on a couch, and we were both looking at one another, and we were both leaning with our arms up, right? And then she brushed her hair back and then she was like talking to me. And then I saw a man's hand come in between her hair and touch it too. And <laughs> I know she's so skittish, but literally like my face, I was like, uh-huh. And I was like, <laughs> because I was like, I couldn't hide it. And then my sister was like, don't tell me, is it behind me? Like, just don't tell me. <laughs> so I was... I was like, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's nothing. <laughs> but then I kept like looking behind her <laughs> and she was like so mad. She was like, what is it? <laughs> so, um, clearly my facial expressions tends to give things away, especially if I'm looking at you in the eye and you're looking back at me and then I keep going off to the side. <laughs> Go and I just keep doing this the whole time. People can kind of tell. Um, one of my girlfriends, I went to go visit her in Arizona and I stayed there for the weekend. And when she picked me up from the airport, she said, Tassie, if my house is haunted, I do not want to know. Like, don't even say anything to me at all. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was nice there. I, I had a good time there. But then I remember the next morning I was like, just so you know, you're in the clear. <laughs> but then she felt relieved. But then at the same time, like, had I not said anything, you know, like she probably would have kept wondering, you know, so, you know, normally people who know me, they will outright tell me. Um, some people though, they're a bit more just bossy about it where they're just like, do you see anything around me? Like that is like the first thing they'll say just because they want it over with. They just need to know. So 
you know, um, some entities obviously are stronger and they will try to hide from me on purpose because they know kind of like whenever I go to someone's house, whatever is in there knows that I'm coming. So they try to hide. They try to hide in a certain part of the house where they believe I will not go to because they believe I'm there to do something to them. But I'm not. I'm really just here to eat and hang out, you know, but entities tend to do that because they can feel when something else is coming. Um, in case you guys didn't know that. <laughs> All right. Until next time, you guys.